Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. Get it. Whoa. I gotta make that not be on my camera. Then I have to scrunch down. Alright, well I'm still having technical difficulties, but it's okay. I'm just gonna go with what I know tonight because I was gonna do a Facebook Live on my computer, but I didn't know whether it was gonna work or not. So you know what? I'm just going with what I have. Finally got everything loaded up to YouTube except for this, so we're just going to pray for the best. But, where'd my music go? Good news is I'm listening to some music tonight with my old phone. I should have grabbed my Bluetooth, but I didn't. Anyway, I hope you had an awesome day today. I got quite a bit done today. I got a project done. I cleaned out Seth's closet. Oh, it was so bad. There were things that have been there since 2009. Things that needed to go in the trash. Or things that just needed to be gathered up and put in one place. Anyway, it's all done now. His closet's done have to do the other two adults closets though. Mine is not as bad as my husband's. I don't even know what's over there. It's scary. That's kind of scary. But I need him to be here to help me too because I don't want to throw away something and get get blamed for throwing away something that he thinks he needs. Anyway, Tonight we are going to talk about, who are we talking about? Talked about David Platt last night. I think this is the, the one that I took the most notes on. And um, it's Jackie Hill Perry. So good. Now listen, if you want to go and find these on YouTube and watch them for yourself, feel free because they are starting to upload a few of the speakers things and even a few of the music videos too so feel free okay so then um, Crowder had a, a concert and so he ended day one so the end of David Platt's was Crowder coming out and doing a concert and Sean Curran came out too and helped him with some of the songs. But it was really good. So then the next day is... Ah! I'm sorry, my nose itches. It's going to be part five. Yeah, my hair's a little wet. I have to... I found that getting Seth and I's baths on Saturday helps immensely on Sunday morning. So, um, I did that today, too. Okay, well, let's pray. God, we just thank you for this time. We just pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to what you want to teach us. We're so thankful for all the things that you do. Uh, please remove me from this and um, replace what you want to say with the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, let's get started. Okay. Let me get my other Bible out because it's just so lightweight. It's just so much easier to deal with. When we get back to Psalms, we'll go back to my study Bible. I ordered me a stand that I can stand it up in. And maybe I can move it close enough to me that I can read it also. So that will be really, really good. Okay. January. This took place on January the 3rd, five days ago. Students from all over um, the country and the whole world, that's who was in attendance. And so Passion Music started us out with God of Revival, Shine Like the Stars, You're Doing a New Thing. They have, they have a song called New Thing that just goes with the scripture that God has put in front of me. 
Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. His name is still the highest yesterday, today, and forever. And some of these titles may not be right because I have never heard, I hadn't heard a lot of these songs, a few I had. Jesus, the one I count on. Maybe another new song. Um, I, I wrote myself a note, look up new music and get names correct. Mm. Awesome songs, maybe the same song. There's no power. There's nothing that our God can't do. I actually knew that song. There's nothing that our God can't do. So the speaker number one on day two, which is my part five, my part five of this series of Unpacking Passion 22. So, she, Jackie Hill Perry, she's so good. Um, holy, God is holy. She talked about that God is holy. Our God is the Holy One. I say the, not a Holy One. He is the Holy One. Our God is. And so, in Isaiah... Going too far over. Isaiah 6 1. Can't wait to get my stand. It's purple, too. By the way, my favorite color is purple. I don't have purple on right now, but it is. And again, my name is Charm, and this is my ministry, Awesome Treasures Ministry. Because God sees us as His awesome treasures. Okay, Isaiah 6, 1. Isaiah 6, 1 says this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Um, above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet. Twain is two, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert to be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without, inhabit, without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away. And there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten, as a teal tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So that was... Um,
So that was Isaiah when God called him to share with his people. That was Isaiah's calling. He actually saw God in his temple and his train filled the temple. So the whole earth is full of his glory. God is righteous. God has moral purity. God is loving. Repetition adds emphasis. Uh, holy people like to use it as rule keeping. Holy means set apart, making it separate, one of a kind. Comparison of dishes. So she told a story about the comparison of dishes. You have your everyday dishes that you get out and you use every day for everything, for burgers, for everything, and then you have a special set of dishes that are set aside for special occasions. And so God is special, God is set aside, God is set apart, He is holy. God is set apart, more unique. God is set apart from everything that will ever exist. And so, I, at this time, at hearing all this, I go, I am broken about treating God for not treating God with the holiness He deserves. You know, a lot of times I just stumble in here to quiet time and just go, oh, i got to get this done so I can get my day over with. You know, it is a privilege. It is an honor that God wants us to be before Him. And He is holy. And many times we do not deserve to be before a holy God. I know I don't. So God is pure. Isaiah saw a vision of God in heaven. So these were some points that she made about God. God is transcendent. He has always been and will always be. God has always existed. And a beautiful description of God, you know, right in here. Isaiah says, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. And another point that she said about God is God is morally pure, a being that can only do good, speak righteously, um, motive Satan can never influence. Our God is holy, holy, holy. We project our nature onto God, but God is holy, holy, holy. Jesus was accused of being a sinner in John 8. So the root of all sin is the belief of worth and trust in God to supply our need. Well, that doesn't make sense. Let's go to John 8 and see what it says. Sometimes, excuse me, but my notes don't make sense. Sometimes I think when I'm writing them down they make sense, but then when I reread them, uh, that was fun in college, when I would reread it and I'd go, I don't know what I wrote that because I had a habit of shortening words and I would get to where I was studying and I'd go, I don't know what I'm reading. So John 8, I didn't write down the verse. That is not good. Oh, okay. Here it is. It's talking about being the light of the world. Okay. I I'm not sure whether she was talking about the, I'm not sure what she was talking about here, but I think this is good. In John 8, um, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw no one but the woman, this is the harlot that was caught in the act of prostitution or adultery. Um, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn thee. 
go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees, therefore, I've got to turn something up. Sorry, that is, it is so low. I know my, sorry, my microphone was low because I was doing something else today. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I came and whither I go. You judge after the flesh, I judge no man, and yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. So that's who Jesus was. And... Uh, we have to trust in God to supply all of our needs. And um, Jesus was saying who he was. And it says, she said, We have projected unto God, onto God the nature of people that have hurt us and let us down. He is without fault, no sin, no deceit. So the same was what Jesus was saying. He's sinless. He and his Father are one. And um, God is so pure that when someone is next to God, they feel so unpure. So God is a light. Light illuminates and exposes what is in the dark to come out of hiding. This illuminating effect makes us uncomfortable and... And defensive conviction is a form of light and hmm, I don't know what that word is and conviction is a form of light I don't know what I wrote down there I'm sorry God knows everything nothing is hidden from God God knows our hearts and our minds and all sin we try to hide so there is absolutely nothing that we can hide from God God is just punish the sin he is a holy God is the only righteous judge the wrath of God will come if the holy God must judge, why am I still alive? I am a woman or man of unclean lips. That's what Isaiah was saying. I have fallen short of the glory of God. We are still alive because of mercy. We are alive because of God's mercy. So God is mercy. God brings new mercies and blessings every day. That's something that I have come to realize that every day he brings new mercies and blessings. Isaiah 43, 18-19 Isaiah 6 through 6 Isaiah 6 verse 6 Alright, we'll see what that says. Isaiah 6 going too far. Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6, 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand. Okay, I already read that. I read that ahead of time. Uh, your sin has been... What did he say? Your 
iniquity has been taken away. It's been atoned for. Isaiah did not ask for atonement. He humbled himself before a holy God. God initiated atonement. Jesus paid our debt before our sins. God has always been holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. Her description of what the seraphs do and how what they saw when God came as Jesus to earth. Isaiah saw the glory of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, all should bow. Thank you, God, for being faithful, creator, sustainer, provider. She, she did a lot of descriptive words. I couldn't write that fast. Thankful, reverent, bless, holy, holy, holy. Um, and then more music took place. Um, I think that the lady that came out sang, We Cry Holy, Holy, Holy. And that was really beautiful and that was really fitting for the end of this. And so, they talked about the 12 verse challenge again. And I said, where did I say that? I don't know where I said it, but he told me to use my rays to help others. So, that's what I'm going to do. Then everybody went to lunch. Everybody went to lunch. And I'm going to end it right there. And I don't even know who the next speaker is going to be. Oh, Ben Stewart. Ben Stewart is so good. Ben Stewart is going to be tomorrow night's speaker. And like I said, if you can go and listen to these, uh, you're going to get more out of it if you listen to all of it than out of my notes. I just wanted to share some things that God has shared with me through watching this. And I thought it was really good because it has God's Word too. It's, it's tied back to God's Word. So Isaiah was a man of unclean, unclean lips. And many times we are men and women of unclean lips. But there is atonement through Jesus Christ. We were given Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 I doubt if you can read that. I don't know why my camera is not very clear. I think Facebook might can. There's kind of a glare on that too, but isn't that beautiful? I bought this at my pastor's wife's shop, and I hardly wear it. It's not very comfortable, but I keep it on my desk because it's my favorite verse for my ministry. My ministry bag has that verse on it. And uh, anyway, I like it. Okay, how do we want to do the gospel tonight? I want to get some new ones. Oh, I did find this when I was cleaning my desk off. I don't know if I remember how to do it. We'll give it a shot. It doesn't really tell you. I thought it had a piece of paper that came with it. I'm pretty sure it did. But I, the, the piece of paper is what I can't find. Okay. I could probably wing it. Now I can't fold it back up. How does it fold back up? Oh, there we are. 
Okay. I'm going to be another day. I'll see if I can find the piece of paper. It's probably over here on my desk somewhere. How about this one? Between you and God. Between you and God. Oh, this is it. This is actually it. This is the piece of paper. All right, well, we'll do it this way. Okay, this is the first two steps. And this is a E3 resources, just like the bracelet that I do sometimes. Where is my bracelet? No, I cleaned my desk off and I can't find anything. Okay, our sin separates us from God. The light on the right represents God. God is perfect, holy, and loving. Well, this is perfect. We just talked about God being holy and loving and has provided a way for salvation. In contrast, the man in darkness, the man in darkness, okay, this is, this is so hard with two cameras. Okay, so this is this. This is God. This is man. Separated by sin. In contrast, the man in darkness represents man in his sin, separated from God. Sin is more than wrong thoughts or actions, but a heart that is inclined towards evil. Jeremiah 17, 9, the Bible says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23, Apart from God's grace, man is without hope. Jesus paid the debt for our sin. The cross is a picture of God's grace. God sent his own son, Jesus, to earth as a man. He died on the cross for us so that he might take our sins away. Okay, that's going to be the bottom part right there. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Jesus took away our sin in his own body on the cross so that he could bring us to God. 1 Peter 2, 24 and 1 Peter 3, 18. Or 3 and 18. I don't know. It's hard to read. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We read that a while ago, John 3.16. There is nothing we can do on our own to pay the penalty for our sin. If we could, then God would not have sent his Son to die for us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sin. Okay, let me see where we go now. Okay, these are the three things that we're going to do next. After Jesus died, men buried him in a tomb, sealed with a huge stone and guarded by soldiers. Jesus is risen. Three days later, God raised Jesus from the dead, declaring that he truly is the Son of God and that God was satisfied with his payment for sin. Jesus then appeared to many people before returning to his Father in heaven. Jesus is the way. The only way we can come to God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus has paid the penalty God demands for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. But just knowing these facts does not ensure salvation. Oh, I knocked my bracelet off us. Going for my fan. But just knowing these facts does not ensure salvation. We must respond to God's grace by trusting in Jesus Christ alone. As the only one who can forgive our sins and give us God's gift of eternal life. So then this is the last portion that I'm going to read to you. Trust only in Jesus. The penalty for sin is eternal separation from God. But Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life with God. 
we need to accept this gift of God offers. The way we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ is by trusting in Him alone for complete payment of our sin. The Bible says that our sin is removed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Romans 3.22 Are you trusting in Jesus for your salvation? You can. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10.9 If you are trusting in Christ for your salvation, tell God by praying something like this. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me slow this down so you can repeat this if you want to accept Jesus as your Savior. If you want to pray your own prayer, then feel free to do that. Thank you for loving me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. I trust Jesus alone to forgive me and take away all my sins. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember, it is not the words of a prayer that save you. God saves you when you respond in faith to His grace. If you trusted in Christ today, Jesus promises you in John 10, 27 through and 28, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. All right, so that's hard to fold back. So then over here, over here are some symbols, just some things that will help you with your spiritual growth. Because you were saved by the precious blood of Christ, you should follow God and learn to please Him. Here are some of His requirements for you to grow spiritually. Love God and all people. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 36-40 Pray. Pray to God constantly. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Philippians 4, 6-7 Study the Bible, God's Word, daily. Start with the Gospel of John. Read one chapter each day. Like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the Word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. 1 Peter 2, 2 Meet regularly with other Christians, not forsaking your own assembling together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Hebrews 10.25 Tell other people about Jesus. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark 16.15 So if you did accept Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God.
Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I can't hold this. Uh, oh, got it. <laughs> and the angels are rejoicing. And you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And, uh, yes, try to read God's Word every day so you can grow spiritually. Pray to God to lead you to a church so that you can have fellowship, you can learn, you can praise, you can worship there with the church family. It'll be an awesome experience for you. Okay, well, I think I'm going to get off of here now. So let me pray. And uh, God, we just thank you for this time that we can open up your word, God, and that you allow me to share what I learned from your messenger's message. God, and that we have the opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus with a lost and hurting world. And to share your truth from your word, God. We just thank you for that. We just pray. I pray for anyone that comes here, God, that you would bless them abundantly in their families. And that you would protect them, provide for them. And lead and guide them, God. We just pray that you would... Help us to be the spiritual army that you need in these last days. That, God, you would help us to stand fast, to put on the full armor of God daily so that we can face the evil in this world. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, pray and share, warriors. It has been a pleasure to be here. Have an awesome rest of your night. Have an awesome Sunday. I probably will not be here tomorrow night. I'm trying to do six days and one day off. I don't know. If God leads me, I will be here tomorrow night. I just don't know what I'm going to be doing. But <laughs> the kid's hair is messed up. But he did get a bath. Hey, you want to come here? You want to come here? You want to come too? No? Come here. Come in front of the camera. Come here. I'm going to feed you in a minute. Come here. Come here. Let me... I tell people about you all the time. Come here and show people who you are. So this is our... Uh, this is our son, Seth. His hair is... It's clean. <laughs> hey, look at the camera. Say hi. Say hi, folks. Say hi, folks. He came in here to tell me that he wants to eat. Okay. So much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night. Are you saying night night?